Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay, yeah, uh, seals and sea lions. Um, we're going to get the PowerPoint up here. Um, anybody know the difference between a seal and a sea lion? Just yeah. real quick? No. Okay, I'm going to show you the differences so that when you're out there and you see one on the beach, you can say, oh, that's a sea lion or that's a seal. Okay, real simple. Yeah. Good. Well, maybe we'll see more. Okay, so pinnipeds, that's a fancy term. There's going to be a lot of fancy terms here. Uh, don't worry about it. You'll think you'll 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 know what they are. I'll, and I'll make it simple for you. Uh, by the way, that is a baby elephant seal that just popped up there on the screen. And we're going to talk about all the seals and sea lions that we have here in the area that we live in called the Salish Sea. And we are right where that little star popped up there. So that's where we are on Whidbey Island. Whidbey Island. All right, this is supposed to work. Okay, there we go. Marine mammals, mammal in general, have very similar characteristics. Marine mammals and us, we breathe air. And we're going to talk some of those things. Everybody breathes air in their lungs, right? Take a deep breath. Right in. Okay, you're a mammal. Uh, Body temperature is always the same. Even though it gets really, really cold outside, your body's temperature stays the same. Really, really hot outside, your body's temperature stays the same. Same thing with the marine mammals. Um, give birth to live young. Working, okay. Uh, they nurse your young. They, at some point, even whales, which are considered marine mammals, have hair. Whales just have it on their chin a little bit, but always have hair at some point in their lives. And they also can get the diseases we get. So that's something important to know. If you ever go and see a sea lion or a seal on the beach, realize they could be carrying something we could catch. There are a lot of them. And I said all seals and sea lions are called pinnipeds because pinniped means, if you take the word apart, pinna means feathered wings. Some of their four flippers could almost be confused as a wing. And they are footed. Head means foot, so they are wing footed, is what this term refers to. Uh, a lot of them on the world, if you were to hold up all your fingers like this, okay, that's 100% right there, 100% of your fingers. If you drop one finger like so, that's what most of the seals are. Most of the pinnipeds out there are seals, not, and the sea lions only. Take ten percent up there. So seals are the most. Uh, pinnipeds. They were at one time millions and millions and millions of years ago land animals, and they slowly evolved into the sea. And their closest relative, living relative on land, is the. Wait for it. Okay. No, it's not really. I just want to put my dog up there. The bear, the bear, the uh, weasels, uh, otters are the closest DNA living relative to the pinnipeds in the water. Uh, that's my dog Gizmo. Okay, wait. Uh, when you just look at a quick diagram, uh, the biggest differences that you're going to see are um, that you'll visibly see is in a sea lion, the flippers are much larger. Okay. They have a little ear flap like we do, okay? And they move on land quite quickly, uh, surprisingly quickly. Seals just have a little hole for an ear and you can see the difference in their flipper sizes. Uh, significantly different. We're gonna hold questions to the very end. Could you do that? Oh, you're awesome. And I just highlighted all the things you can tell the difference, but the big three main ones are the flipper size, the ear, and how fast they move on land or how they locomote, how they move, walk. This is just some of the skeletal diff differences. You can see they're very similar. They all have the same bones. They're just larger in seals, especially in their feet and their flippers. The two or the four we have here in the Salish Sea are the California sea lion, the stellar sea lion, and northern elephant seal and harbor seal. We have two of each. So we're going to first go over the sea lions, talk about the ones we have up here. 
California sea lion, um, probably seen them the most in pictures and photographs. If you've ever been to a Seattle Aquarium or an Oceanarium, they're the ones that are doing all the tricks and you know walking, looking like clowns and stuff. Um, they get pretty big, up to eight feet. Uh, females not much smaller. Uh, they're up to six feet, uh, and they uh, they can get pretty big and pretty heavy. The males have a big forehead. Uh, when they're adults, you get this big sagittal crest up there on the forehead. And that's one easy way to tell a, a male from a female California sea lion. And they bark like a dog, which we'll listen to in a minute and hear what that sound like. Yeah, I'll show you in a second. I'll let you listen in a minute. Um, they eat fish pretty much. Uh, sometimes when they go deep enough, they'll eat squid. Uh, live up to 15, 17 years. Uh, not very long. They are the fastest of the swimmers. They can swim up 25 miles an hour and turn on a dime in the water. They're amazingly agile uh, and quick. And they can move on land pretty quick too. That's one of the illusions. We think that these animals come out of the water and they don't move very fast. Well, they can move quite quickly. That's the, that's the California sea lion. It sounds like barking dogs. Uh, that's just a couple of photographs of a male and female. You can see the difference in uh, size and then a mom and her pup in the lower right corner. This is the area along the west coast that they inhabit. Uh, the purplish, dark purple is where they breed, where they come ashore on the beaches. And then the lighter blue is uh, areas they'll travel to. So you can see they go down to kind of almost end of, of Mexico all the way up to Alaska. And we see them up here, mostly males, but we do see California sea lions coming up here. In fact, oftentimes we'll take a bothersome one that's like eating a lot of fish or sitting on somebody's boat, transport them back down to California. And then they're oftentimes up here faster than we can drive back up here. It's pretty crazy. This is them, you can see them walking. You can see how agile and how they can move on those front clippers. And they uh, sometimes can gather in groups, jump up on buoys, jump up on docks, sometimes jump up on people's boats. And since they get so many of them, they sink the boat. That's crazy. They also do something really kind of cool. You'll see them often out in the water with their four flippers up. People say, oh, that's a shark. No, no sharks. There are a bunch of them, and they are actually cooling or warming their bodies. Their four flippers have no fur. They have no fat. Their blood circulates. The blood vessels circulate really close to the surface, and they're dark color. You ever wear a dark black shirt out in the, outside in the sun? You have to feel the heat, and that's the same concept. While some of them are sleeping also, there are some on guard watching for predators out there. Uh, which are mostly for those guys are sharks and killer whales. The next is a stellar sea lion. This guy is a big, big animal. And I, well, yeah, and he does very much so. They can get up to over a, a ton, 2,500 pounds. And that's just a huge amount, up to 11 feet long. They are very strong, and they uh, you can see the difference in weight. Uh, they're pretty, the females and the males are much different in size. Uh, they are the largest of the sea lions. They roar, they don't bark. And we're gonna listen to that sound in a minute. Again, they eat uh, fish, squid, shrimp, uh, pretty much anything out there that they can grab a hold of except us, they don't eat us. That's a good thing. Uh, they can live up to 30 years, which is kind of nice. Uh, they're called polygamous. That means all the boys have a lot of girls around them. They like the ladies. Um, maybe 20, 30 in a harem, it's called. And, oh yeah, this is where we're going to talk a little bit more about how these pinnipeds can dive and how deep they can go. Um, incredibly deep waters they can go into. 1,400 feet, and they can hold their breath up to 20 minutes. Ever tried to hold your breath that long? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'd say try to hold your breath right now, but you Okay, they are an endangered species. Um, unfortunately, 
uh, again, back to that old, oh yeah, that's what it sounds like. Big difference in the aren't, 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 so yeah. Uh, this is their range. Uh, you can see all the way to the right there from uh, kind of Northern California all the way across the Bering Sea to Japan and the Philippine Islands. And the little uh, red triangles are where they haul out, uh, called rookeries. Ever been up to the Coopville Wharf? No? Nope. All right, when you do, you can see a skeleton of one hanging up there. We call him Samson. Kind of like the big bird. Look at those, it's kind of that pinniped, that pinnip look, you know, almost like a wing. Okay. <laughs> I know. Uh, they're only, like I say, they're only about 10% left of the original population. Again, hold your fingers up. That's 100%, right? But only one finger up. That's all that's left. All right. So a lot of. Uh, a lot of loss for stellars, mostly because they're in competition with us for what we eat. We like fish, they like fish. And we put out nets and all sorts of things to catch those fish, and they get caught in those nets, and they will die uh, if they're caught in the nets. And then uh, us humans have overfished. We've taken all, almost a lot of that fish that they eat, so they don't have anything to eat as well. So because of those two factors, uh, the population has really gone down. Sometimes they'll be branded. Uh, they'll put markings on them so they can track who these animals are, where they're going, keep an eye on their population and their health. They don't eat seals. They only eat fish. There's, a, yeah, we're talking about these guys don't, but there's certain seals that will eat other seals. Not here, not in our place. Okay, we're talking about our seals now. We have two, the northern elephant seal and the harbor seal. And um, the northern elephant seal, he, uh, yeah, I, wa I don't wanna say they're pretty because they're not pretty, they're cute, especially when bait now as pups. Uh, but you can see the big difference. That's a big male and a smaller female. They're the lar largest of our um, uh, pinnipeds up here. These guys can get up to 14 feet long and weigh over two tons. They are, other than the walrus, there's nothing bigger than they are. They have a southern cousin down there off of uh, South America that can get even bigger. Um, but again, they're the biggest difference in size. You can see 4,400 pounds versus 1,800 pounds for females. Lifespan up to 20 years. The males are obvious. The biggest uh, feature of them is that big snout they have, almost like an elephant's trunk. It's called a proboscis. And if you remember that noise it made, or it's going to make a noise. It kind of creates that sound within that proboscis. In a moment, we'll hear that noise. They eat things from the bottom of the ocean, skates, rays, things that live in the sand. Uh, they like squid. They dive very, very deep. And we'll talk about how deep they dive in a moment here. Uh, they're the largest of the true seals in the Northern Hemisphere. And again, their Southern brothers are even bigger. Um, they leave the water only to breed, give birth, and to molt. And we'll talk about molting in a minute. Uh, but the, they spend 80% of their time in the water um, and deep. They can go to depths of over a mile which is crazy. I mean, you think about it. And at those depths, the pressure on your body, if you've ever been to the bottom of a swim pool, you can hear your ears pop, things like that. That's pressure. Um, I'm not gonna talk about that specifics of pressure here. But the crazy part too, is not only can they go to the bottom that deep, they can stay down for over an hour. Hold your breath for an hour, everybody. Good luck. The, um, they're able to control their heart rate because their beats per minute, our beats per minute are about 60, somewhere in that range. Their beats per minute are five, five beats per minute. That's one beat every 12 seconds. Oh, we didn't hear that sound. Should we get their film built up? Yeah, okay. A lot 
different. Good observation. Okay. Go on here. This is just a diagram of where these guys show up. Um, again, our can we go back to one real quick? Nah, never mind. Like I said, the deepest recorded dive for an elephant seal is 7,000 feet and stayed down for over two hours. I mean, that's insane. To think of any living creature can do that, take a breath. Come to the surface for about five minutes and then they go back down again for that kind of depth. This is their range, again, mostly uh, all from Mexico up to our area and up into Alaska. And again, the Salish Sea, that's the range that they are there. The longest of the migrating, up to 13,000 miles of swimming in that one year that they're gone or eight months that they're out there. They have something called site fidelity. Wherever they get born and wherever they decide to land and molt, they come back year after year after year to that same spot. They were almost hunted to extinction uh, because of the oil that their bodies produce. And um, back in the late 1800s, they estimated a population to be anywhere between four to 100 individuals. And that was only in Mexico. Uh, the island off of Mex in Guadalupe Island was protected for different reasons. And that protection allowed them to continue to populate. And now they've done such a remarkable job. They're like on all the, a lot of the beaches of California and the islands. Um, and that's the kind of beaches off of just, I think, north of San Fran or south of San Francisco, uh, Sausalito in that area. Uh, it's hard to believe that's just all uh, elephant seals. That gives you an idea that they're not just these cute little things on the beach. They got big teeth, and they, uh, yeah, they, you don't want to, you don't want to get near them. You just don't want to. They can bite, and they are still quick. Anybody know anything about extreme sports? That's a big, you know, mountain biking, uh, paraglide. Everyone likes the extreme. Well, these are the animals, the the extreme pinped athletes. Everything they do is extreme. Where they dive, what they eat, they're competing against each other. Uh, it, it's amazing. Everything's extreme. As I said, they can stop their hearts to where they're only beating five beats per second or per minute. Males are three times larger than the females, as I said before, and um, they're not just polygamous. The, Males like to have sometimes a hundred females around them. It's it's just amazing the numbers they have out on these beaches. When they come, uh, the moms come to nurse the the babies. They're out of the water for the entire time, and that could be up to six weeks. Imagine not eating or drinking for six weeks, and they lose their thirty percent of their body uh, weight during that time. So again, everything with these guys is extreme. Um, we're going to talk about molting. Once a year, they come out of the water again, and they shed their entire layer of skin and hair. Everything comes all off. All of it comes right off. And um, it takes about anywhere between four to six weeks for that, and they have to fast during that entire time as well. When they're born, you can see the big difference between mom and the baby. The baby is pretty much totally dependent on mom and she's out of the water again. Could be four, could be five weeks nursing the baby. Uh, the baby will gain 100 pounds a day, or 10 pounds a day. Uh, and that's pretty amazing. And that's because of the amount of uh, milk fat that's in mom's milk. And she doesn't go back in the water. But once she goes back in the water, baby's on its own. Mom leaves forever bye 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 baby and the uh, baby will stay on the beach itself teaching itself how to swim teaching itself how to, to feed and get out there that's a baby imagine having to listen to that for three weeks play that again just for the heck of it 
That's a great sound. Mom, I'm hungry. By the way, that those pictures are of the latest birth we have up here on Whidbey. That's uh, Elsie May and her son Emerson, which we'll show you in a minute. This is what it looks like when they're molting. It's not a pretty sight, and it is st amazingly stressful on the body. Uh, they lose all that skin, all that fur, and snotty noses, and their eyes are running. And people will call and say, "Hey, we have a seal really sick." No, it's just molting. And this is our Whidbey Island family that we're kind of gotten to know very well. Um, Mom, his name is Ellie. She started coming back to our beaches uh, here on Whidbey uh, in 2010, but then surprised us all in 2015. She had a, a little girl, uh, Elsie May, and then three years later, she gave birth again, and then two years later, birth again, and then a year after that, another one. But nothing since then. So. We don't know, but she's been coming back every single year, same beach. These are the six we know of that are still here. Uh, I don't know if we hope they're all still here. I went up to Ellie the other day and she's still here by the way, and she decided she didn't want me close. But you guys. Ellison was the firstborn, a boy, and then Elsie May in 2018. And then Eloise in 2020, Elwood in 2021, and then last year, 2022, Emerson, that was to Elsie May, who's, by the way, made quite a name for herself up in the Anacortes area. Okay, the last of our seals is the harbor seal, which we have the most of here on the island, and you pretty much can see them all year round, though right now is the time the pups are being born. They don't get that big. They're only, you know, males only six feet to 300 pounds. And by comparison to the other pinnipeds, they're the smallest for sure. Yeah, that's a pup. Um, less than three feet when they're born, 25 pounds. Um, again, eat fish, crustaceans, squid, crabs, if they can grab them. Uh, live up to 30 years and they don't migrate. They stick around. That's why you're always going to see them up here in the, in the Salish Sea. Um, they are deep divers too, but not nearly the elephant seal. Uh, but again, they can hold their breath 20 minutes or so, half hour. Pretty amazing. They have, we have no problem with harbor seals. There's plenty of them. They're not endangered. We don't have to worry about them. They're all over the, all, everything in the Northern uh, hemisphere, even in uh, Washington, or I'm sorry, in the West Coast, we have five specific groups of harbor seals. Moms and pups, uh, I have one pup a year. Again, all this birthing occurs on the beaches, all the, all the nursing occurs on the beaches. Uh, mom will nurse them, she'll go to sea, leave the pup on the beach. And that's where we get most of our phone calls. We have a baby on the beach, it's been abandoned. Um, and that's not the case. The babies on the beach are supposed to be there. They don't really know how to swim yet. And so mom's out taking care of herself uh, while the baby is being cared for. If we just leave it alone, it's, it's fine. The beach is like a nursery, okay? These animals aren't stranded. Um, and it's the safest place for them because they don't have any predators out there to, to bother them. Sometimes coyotes come by, but not a problem. Mom is watching, believe it or not. Mom can see what's going on out there. Their biggest danger is us. And not because we're trying to be mean to them, it's because they look so helpless and we try to think we're helping them. If we get too close to them, if we do things, if we move them, mom will see that. Oftentimes she will abandon the pup then and then we do have a problem. So if you see one, don't just let it be, it's fine. Um, phone numbers I'll give you, you can call me. I've got such amazing volunteers out there that uh, come out and they watch and they educate. Their biggest predators are the killer whale and the great white shark, which I have not seen any, any up here in the Salish Sea. 
um, uh, they are protected by law. You can't bother these these seals or sea lions. Uh, it's a violation of federal law to to do anything to them. Human dangers are things like getting hit by boats. Um, we were just up on Cypress Island, and this little baby was literally sucking on the hull of the boat looking for a mom. Uh, and was there for it turned out for about three days until we finally were able to get it get it saved over to a place called Wolf Hollow and uh, he's doing really well but um, yeah uh, they get near boats they're not afraid of and sometimes a boat will hit them they'll get hurt people sometimes foolishly shoot at them I don't know why uh, and of course they like what we like crab fish and sometimes we get tangled in that gear uh, but again, the biggest one is uh, human interference for people out of trying to help them, thinking they're helping them, will actually create a situation where mom will abandon them. Other things that they're, you know, we got things that we put on our lawns, things that we try to kill bugs with, stuff that gets into the water and it gets in, into our wastewater and it gets into the sound. And... Uh, what should you do if you find a seal on the beach? Leave them alone. Leave them alone. If you're with mom and dad, have them take a picture, have them give me a location, and have them give me a call. Um, and then we'll get somebody out there to see, you know, what we can do if the animal's really hurt or if it just needs to be left alone. That's it. I want to thank everybody. <laughs> And now, do you have a question? Emerson would like to answer. All right, you're going to help me with this. Yes, but what I would rather is you call me because these seals do have diseases. And if you go in and aren't protected, people, you know, gloves and stuff like that, you can catch that disease. So call me. If they're in the water, they're fine. The, the people get worried is when they're on the beach and they think they're stranded, they think they can't swim, they think they're cold, or think they're hot. And, uh, but yeah, in the water, they're fine. That's where they belong. Hey, Gary, right. would you mind repeating the question so the Zoomers can hear it? What did Cindy say? What was that, Katie? Are there questions online, Cindy? No, but I was just asking if he could repeat the questions oh, so yeah. the Zoomers can hear them. Oh, I'm sorry. So what was the last question? Oh, they were, he was asking whether or not they can, uh, uh, in the water, uh, if they should call. I said, no, only call if you think they're on land and think they're hurt or they need help. That's uh, a good question. They belong in the water. That's great. Yeah. Okay, then they're, then they're in great shape. Yeah. And I think maybe they did or didn't hear his question about if it was it's dead on the beach, should you bury it? Uh, no. Uh, call. Make a call, get somebody out there, we'll take care of the animal. And uh, because they do carry diseases, we don't want anybody getting sick. Doesn't matter, you're still going to have disease, still can catch. Okay, well, thank you, everybody. That's kind of a, a bridged version, but I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>